these last two points, station-based practices where the kids move and the coaches stay put, and, and now everyone knows exactly what they're supposed to be teaching, is that it standardized the experience for everyone. If you've got multiple teams at a level, it's just like your kids in school, I hope I get the right teacher. Jimmy's gonna bristle under Mrs. Smith. He's gonna excel under Mrs. Jones. Well, it doesn't matter now because all of our coaches touch all of the teams. So A, the coaches feel success when any team succeeds, and B, it doesn't quite matter what team you wind up on because you're still going to have access to the best talent of those volunteers. So the coaching committee got together and, and we put together a design. We went to the board and we said, we suck. And I showed them our statistics and I said, so we want to do this. And they said, well, okay. And then the hard part came. And that was the town hall meetings, and I talked about my nephew. He was not alone. There were nine families that were trapped who were going to wind up in cross ice the first year um, when they had played full ice the previous season. So we went to those town hall meetings and we educated. Why we're doing this? Why, 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 why? Mom, Dad, I care about your son or daughter and this is what's best for them, and we need you to trust us. Well, I don't. Well, that's fine. We're going to do it anyway. And if you really, truly don't, sincerely, I don't want your, your experience here to be miserable, and I don't want you to be a drain on the rest of the families that are bought in. We all know the little cancers that start on the top corner of the, of the stands and, and try and spread. Let's help you find somewhere where you get what you think your family needs. Sincerely, because this is what we're doing. And if you, if you trust us, I hope it's going to turn out and you're going you're gonna to wonder, what was I worried about? We didn't have 100% buy-in. You're not going to. Someone last night asked for, just tell us what to do and then we can do it and that way I can leave, you know, I can, I can blame it on the man. And I have used that excuse, but it's the last one. The vocal minority were those people who sat still in that video. Those three or four people who were too cool to get up and join that flash mob. That's the vocal minority. Everybody else eventually went along with it because they just waited for someone finally to show us a better way. And most of your members are the large group that comes in once there is momentum. You're not as alone as you think you are. They're just waiting for someone to stand up for them. And they'll join you, and that vocal minority who is, who is too ingrained in the way that they do things, in our association, they've just given up. <laughs> Even if they don't have 100% buy-in, they know that, that most people seem really, really happy, and, and it's, it's not worth talking about anymore. Which is great, because the drain on, on us dealing with the vocal minority can really be taxing as volunteers. So we were, we were rolling this out, and you're going to have to have a first season at some point, regardless of how dramatic of a change you make. Ours was pretty radical, admittedly. So we said, well, let's make this the coolest thing that could ever possibly happen for six and eight-year-olds. So again, paying homage to our friends north of the border, we, we stripped them of, of our travel team uniforms, and we put them in original six uniforms, and they were the Kirkwood Canadians and the Kirkwood Maple Leafs and the Kirkwood Bruins and Rangers, etc. And we held a draft party. Normally it's just popped up on a website, here's the team, the coach reaches out with an email. Not real exciting. Well, we, we put up a stage and the coach came up and he talked about each player he was drafting and he was drafting. And the kid came up and got his jersey and got his picture and they were fired up to be part of this new experience. And once you get the kids on board, the parents are going to give up anyway. <laughs> we, we did some skills testing, and there's been some talk about this. We needed to re-educate our parents on what to focus on. Okay, I did, uh, admittedly, I told you our wins and losses. And we used that as our excuse to get going. But we didn't share that with our parents. We said, stop, well, first of all, we're playing in-house in cross-ice games, and there is no score, so I'm not sure, but I know 
there were a few dads who could tell me after the game what the score was. But we're not, gonna, we're not keeping score, not because everyone gets a trophy, but because it just doesn't matter. We want them to compete, and we want them to battle, but we want them to focus on taking risks and getting better. So we had skills testing, which I'm sure you do. Ours were probably a little bit different, and we told the parents, this is what you measure us on. Since you don't know how we finished in a league, measure us on these. I gave in that, that initial year, and I went back the other day and was looking at some of the communications and kind of smiling. Um, I gave every couple of weeks a kind of a state of the union and how things were going. Uh, I happened to have a child starting at that level, which was, uh, made it easy for me as the coaching director to know how it was going. But regular big picture communication to help them feel good about the progress. And then we mentored our coaches because it was a whole new way to coach. So there were a couple of us that, that went in and initially for the first month or six weeks, we did the practice plans. We shared them with the coaches. And then we said, down the road, you guys are all going to take turns. Send me a plan by Wednesday for Saturday. I'll, I'll help you uh, tweak it if necessary so that they could see what we were looking for and then take it and do it themselves with a little bit of guidance. So a re-indoctrination of practice plan design for our coaches. And then we included our parents. Not only did we, did we give them the skills testing results, which I'll, I'll show you here in a second, but then we also gave them a new set of criteria. If you're out of practice and you want to see how your kid's doing, we're going to give you some pass-fail sheets. Measure them on these things. And then you can even come up and talk to the coach about the things that, that we're supposed to be uh, teaching him that he wasn't doing. And we can tell you whether or not we're going to get to that or thank you and, and we'll, we'll work on it. So when we gave our kids skills testing, and this is just a, a simple example of one player, there's nothing significant about the numbers other than I want you to understand, mom or dad, where your kid falls within the group. So here's the high, here's the low, here's the average, and if that's skewed, here's the median. And here are his scores that don't go running off and jumping off a bridge because he's on the low end on anything. We're going to come back at the end of the year, and we're going to show you the postseason results, and you're going to see some changes. And we were hoping they were dramatic, and, and they were. Uh, the, the kids that were at the low end, obviously, were showing incredible results. We have a cumulative time in the corner, and some of them on the, on the speed drills were, were shaving off, and I am not kidding, 100 seconds in their cumulative time of their skills testing over multiple, multiple um, events. But nothing radical here, just presented and empowering the parents. And then this is an example of, of a scorecard. There were about 11 different categories, and we said, we're going to do our best to teach your kid all of the things in here in all of these categories over the course of the season. So it's not whether or not we won the game or not, but is he holding his hands correctly? Is he, is he looking at where he wants to pass? Is it where he wants to shoot? Is he, is he, is he doing it properly? Okay, we really want you to care about your own kid and don't worry about what anybody else's kid is doing. So refocusing our parents on what to look for and how to, how to hold us accountable. So we did the postseason skills testing and lo and behold, everybody improved radically and I'm sure they would improve a decent amount at that age in, in a traditional format. But these were radical. And then we asked our parents to evaluate the coaches, give feedback on how they thought the coaches did, and I'm sure you do that as well. Those based on those new criteria. Because I find when I read my parents' review of their coaches, their impression on our travel teams of how their, kid, their coach was is oftentimes correlated with the wins and losses. The coach can be an idiot, but if he had a talented team, they think he was the greatest thing ever. And if their team happened to struggle, the coach is a moron, even though we all know he's probably the best coach in the association. 
So we said, measure our coaches on the things we told you to measure them on and tell me whether or not they did a good job. We had so many emails unsolicited from families who said, this is wonderful, mostly comparing it to either the way their older kids experienced hockey or the way that their other sports approach teaching their children, that we use that. And, and, and I put together eight or 10 of, of my favorite emails and we sent it out to membership and said, see, this works. These are, these are your peers who we didn't ask, but, but were just so overwhelmed by how they were with the product that they told us about it. And we reviewed and we adjusted. Um, there were things that we did. One, one of my favorite things um, about my initial attempt at this was I wanted to show parents, I was so nervous about rolling this out, I wanted to show parents that we were in control. So even though we were moving to these stations, everything was really regimented and structured. And look how brilliant I am about the practice plan that I designed. You see the way those kids are all moving and, and it's, a, it's just a well-oiled machine. And USA Hockey came in um, a couple of years later and we were still kind of approaching it that way. And he said, what are you doing? So what do you mean? Look, these parents, the kids are doing, they're marching and it's perfect and we're, this is the Russian Red Army here. And he said, I know, but there's four kids in line. If you ever thought about doing this two at a time, three at a time, so they're going to run into each other. Exactly. And they're going to keep their head up. And they're going to, they're going to be put in chaotic situations that are a lot more game-like. Huh. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So now our practices at that age look like chaos. It looks like if you ever watch an army of ants and you have no idea what they're doing, but they seem to be crawling all over each other and they get stuff done. And parents get nervous because there are some awesome collisions. Yard sales everywhere, kids slamming into each other. And I get the mom come running over the boards and her son's crying and, 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 I, and I explain to her the, the, the reason that we do it she thinks I'm an idiot and she takes her kid off and she hugs him and gives him the attention that he probably needs. But he says, Mom, I want to get back out there. So we adjust regularly. We are open to ideas. Um, at this youngest level, things are, things are pretty, well, pretty well indoctrinated now, seven years later. But a lot of our radical changes are happening at, at older levels. So fast forward two more years. We've been, we've been working on this basically for our most remedial 8U and all of our 6U kids. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of progress as an organization. We've done some things now where we can start to tinker a little bit with our travel teams at Squirt because some of those kids have seen it before inside the, this program. And lo and behold, we're... Uh, we're almost a 500 club. But I said we, would, we adjust regularly. So that summer we said, all right, well, we've got momentum now. We, we really seem to have families happy three years into this at the introductory level. So why can't, why do we stop? Let's take those same things and start to let those trickle and, and seep into the squirt and peewee levels. So again, this is 2008. I'm sure there's a lot of three-on-three -three that happens. Maybe organically here, back, back home, it wasn't happening at all. So let's, let's offer summer programming for those people who can't get enough, but we're going to make it a lot more of a play format than any sort of training or camp. So we're going to have three-on-three -three in the summertime for anybody who wants to do it. Open it up to other organizations if we need them to round out the field. And, and, and get families used to playing in, in small areas. Um, for the first time, we, we had a paid instructor who came and, and focused on, on skills one night a week. And those were divisional skill nights. And initially, that was another disaster. So we said, all right, squirts and peewees, 10U, 12U, we're going to do skill-centric practices just like we're doing all the time at at the Mike Development Program. But at the very, we'll, we'll do them one night a week. We hope your coaches are doing more of that. 
on a regular basis, but we're going to guarantee it's happening one night a week. And we had too many kids on the ice. We had 70 squirts out there because we did the entire division at one time in one hour because that's all we could afford with the instructor. And it was too much. There was, we got back to too much standing around. So we admitted that, that, it, that it was a mistake and we corrected, but it was still better than what we were doing before. So f fast forward two more years. It's 2010 and we are beating the snot out of everybody in St. Louis. We've done a lot of things right. We've done some things wrong, but we have about a 600 plus goal differential swing from what were we almost 300 minus to 354 plus. At this point, Missouri Hockey and the other association said, what's going on over there? And what we call Mike Development was adopted more or less kind of in a format like this for the entire state of Missouri. So we, our secret sauce was lost. But it's okay. I was, I was thrilled that so many more kids were going to experience at least some of the right things that we had been doing. And because we shared how we were doing it and they implemented it, well, we had to do more to up our game. And as I'm going to show you, what it should encourage you, um, you can't, you can't, you can't overemphasize how important the format is. Because even if you're doing it wrong, it's better, and I'll show you in a second. But we said, well, we just gave away our secret sauce. We gave away the Colonel's chicken recipe. We gave away whatever it is on the Big Mac. What are we going to do now? Well, we've got our own things that we can work on. So um, fortunately, I have a goalie, and that was the most eye-opening thing ever uh, as a coach was to have a to be also a goalie parent. I realized how neglectful we were being with our goalies. So we, we implemented the goalie clinics. We went to the small ro roster sizes that I referenced um, in the uh, in in kind of my opening, and we went to three team practices. So if we had two 13 player squirt teams, we now had three. 10 player score teams, so we got more kids on the ice and we realized we were wasting so much ice. So we went to a three team practice format and one of the brilliant things about that is if you still have a coach who's a non-believer, he can't do anything about it because when you're in a station based format and there's multiple teams out there, we're going to give him 10 minutes in a zone to work with his kids and work on whatever it is that he thinks he needs to work on. But for the most part, his hands are tied about how much he can teach in maybe a more traditional format. So the entire marketplace changes. And we look just last year or two years ago, and we said, holy cow, what happened? We're coming back to the pack. And again, it didn't matter when we were way out in front anyway. That was assurance for those of us on the board or the coaches committee, but it was never anything we would share with our parents because that's not the point. But it sh in theory, it's, it should be the byproduct, and it was. Well, everybody's doing